Hi, my name is Ruth Tedmori, and I'm going to be doing a long razor cut on my model. I've been doing her for about 20 years, and I absolutely love the razor. We're going to keep it longer. Uh, we're definitely cutting off some length, putting a lot of movement, and adding um, layers to it. Uh, I love the razor because it just gives you a lot of control over the texture that you want to give, the movement, and um, the finish. Parted in the center, sectioned off, fairly large but not as big as I would normally with somebody who has less density. Um, so we're going to be cutting about that much length off and also creating a lot of movement in between. I just want to confirm, yep. So right here, normally somebody's nape isn't that thick. So I'm not gonna do, be doing a lot of weight removal here, but once we get into this section here, as I was combing it, I can feel and see that this is where like the bulk of the weight lives. So that I'm gonna be pretty aggressive when it comes to texturizing there. It doesn't need it anywhere else. So we're gonna be doing like longer layers and um, just like a really soft line at the bottom. And I'm just combing her hair down. And again, like when you are using your razor, one, make sure that it's really sharp, that it's fresh. If you feel any sort of like snag, it starts to hurt the client. So I personally just like a nice sharp blade because I also feel like I have a lot more control. So I'm just going in and removing a little tiny bit of weight. Just where I see like there's a little, like, like more dark, that's where I know the weight is. So I'm gonna err on the side of length. So I'm just gonna start there. And I'm not doing like a super broad stroke, but I'm also not doing a very small stroke. It's kind of like a medium stroke, it's like that. Cause I want there to be structure, but I also want it to be soft. So when I comb it out, you can kind of see the line that it, it's created. So I'm just checking it and I just want to take a little bit more weight off of here at the bottom and just kind of whittle that away. So here I'm just, the section is so small and skinny that I could just like hold it like that and cut it. Or I can just bring it in. I feel like I have a lot more tension because it's not that thick of a section. So I'm just holding it between my index and my thumb just to get the right amount of tension. Like the bigger the section, like the easier it is to hold between your fingers, but this is like such a thin section that I'm just using my finger and my thumb for that control. And there is my perimeter. Her hair is really thick, so I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, because I still want to visually see this here and see it also when I am cutting because I could feel it drop but I can't really see it so I have like the feeling plus my visual so here I it's super super thick and you can even see it here like uh, it's just very very dense I can't even see through it so I'm just taking my razor and uh, where I like to remove weight is this the middle of the length that I'm going to cut it to. So it's gonna, the weight remover is, uh, is gonna live here. Like if I go closer to the scalp, it's going to kind of create more volume. And if I go closer to the ends, it's just going to shatter the ends. And that's not really um, the goal here. So I'm just gonna carve out just a few little bits. And if I feel like I'm losing tension, tension, I just recomb and get that tension again. 
And if you notice, I'm not really, I, I have, it's more like uh, parallel, almost parallel to the hair strands so that I am removing a lot less. Like if the more uh, angled it is, the more that you're going to remove uh, bulk. And again, just almost like a broad stroke, but not too big. I still want there to be a lot of like strength at the bottom. I just want it to be a tiny bit looser, not too, too blunt. So again, like right here, it's not quite on the side. It's just like this area. And the more you start combing and um, also cutting with a razor, the more that like you're, you get used to like the senses, you really use your eyes obviously, but like more of like the feeling of the hair. You're combing it through, but you're feeling the hair go through your fingers and you know exactly where the weight is and what needs to be removed. Um, and also when your guideline drops. So sometimes you'll notice that like my, I have a slightly broader stroke and where it's a little bit less hair, I kind of like make my stroke more shallow and just visually it just balances out. Um, they still both have texture, but one is um, going to be a little bit stronger because it needs it. So all of this is going to be layered, so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to elevate it, so I'll, uh, I'm just going to cut length right now because I'll, I'm going to texturize it while it's elevated. The front, I always like to do slightly less broad of strokes unless I know that I want it very, very shattered at the bottom just because um, we don't have as much hair in the front. And so um, I want it to visually be balanced. So I like it to have a little bit more strength and then less strength. And this shouldn't even reach and it doesn't. So I'm going to start her layers in the front because I want all this strength. So I'm going to divide out the length that's going to be her perimeter in the front. You can always add more hair if you don't feel like that's enough, but a lot of hair is going to come here to fill in that density. Cool. And I'm going to take not much off because we want to keep her layers on the longer side. So about that much at an angle, but I'm going to go in and remove some weight first. So when you're, um, cutting layers with a razor, you hold the razor exactly the same. You just flip it. So you can kind of see like that. It's a little bit darker here and it's not just her highlights. It just, um, there's a little bit more density there and there's a little bit more density there as well. So first I'm going to address that before I cut her layers. So whenever I'm cutting layers, what I like to do is I create, I hold on to the hair, but then I create a little bit more, um, like, uh, tension by putting my finger down here and I can go in and just, Um, carve out some of that weight. You don't necessarily have to do it. I just don't, I just find that like I like it with a ton of tension. So I prefer to like create that tension by doing this with the hair. It's, you just got to find what works best for you. Um, Cause I feel like I can have a lot of tension when I am cutting, um, straight down with just my two fingers, but I almost need to use my entire hand when I'm cutting layers just because it's elevated. So I'm working against gravity and I just really need to hold that hair nice and tight. So 
And it's just something that develops over time. Everybody has like their own way of doing it when they cut layers. I just find that that's what works for me. I dropped my guide, but I'm just picking up the section that I'm going to cut because I want to see where I want to remove some weight first. I feel like I don't have enough tension. So again, like I'm holding it a little bit different, but it's whatever you feel you need to do to create a lot of tension on that hair. And again, I'm keeping my perimeter out of it. So I can see my guide, it's very, very light, but I felt it more come out. And again, like I'm spreading my fingers apart, but creating a lot of tension so that I can go in and, and cut the shape that I need. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to divide, divide out the perimeter. So I'm cutting from exterior to interior, but my strokes are going that way. So I'm going short to long, short to long, short to long. And again, creating a lot of tension. Just cutting to my guide. That's part of the perimeter. And I did not remove weight, so I'm just gonna go back and do that a little bit. Perfect. So now we're moving on to the back. And I'm not, I'm gonna just follow the guide here because I know that there's gonna be plenty of perimeter here. There's a ton of hair. So that's why I started in the front because um, I wanted to strengthen the front and I wanted to make sure that the layers um, were still connected. So I'm just going to start right here in the center. I'm gonna take about an inch section. Let's see. and then bring it all up. And I didn't texturize anything at her crown, or at least not much. So I'm gonna go in and make sure that I texturize. So you can see like all the weight. So here's, a, here's like a pocket of weight, here's another pocket of weight. So I'm just gonna go in and again, just kind of stretching everything out. High tension is needed when you're doing razor cuts. If you don't have it, then it's like you don't have control over the hair. So there's my guy. So I'm just gonna go right past it and create a lot of tension. And I go from short to long. So I'm going just a little bit under my guide and then finishing at my guide. So my guide is like where my middle finger is. That's where I want to finish. And then I just go from like here to my middle, my pinky to my middle finger. Okay, here's my section now. Perfect. I'm just like reach, hacking, if I wanna take any more weight off. And I like to comb right after I remove some weight. Um, in the beginning, I can remove a lot of weight because I could see the pockets, but sometimes I'm like, I'll just do like a little bit of removal, 
comb it out and then see how my strand looks. So here's my center section. It's going to pivot. Bring that up. And comb all the way from the base. You want to make sure that you have like no slack, slack pieces of hair. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go from short to long, from short to long. My guide is like at my top finger. And then I'm just going to isolate the section that I just cut and look at the weight. Here we go. It's like super heavy right there. Okay, so now I'm going to just pivot off of that section. And I'm going to bring it all up. This hair isn't even going to reach. So I'm just going to take it out. What I love about razor cutting is also like how much detail you put in while creating the shape. So it's like, I'll go, I go in and detail even more afterwards, but like, I don't have to um, do as much because I'm able to like detail as I go. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm not looking for a straight line because um, I didn't put one in. I'm just looking for like these little stragglers. And also I'm just looking for a general shape. So it goes from shorter to longer. That was the goal. So now I'm going to remove some weight. That's still super weighty. Okay, good. Here it's not as weighty, so I'm going to just take a tiny bit off, comb, just look at it, perfect. And then if this is my final section. And this might be part of the front, so I am going to make sure that I don't cut into that perimeter that I preserved. I'm just going to take that out. I didn't feel like I had enough tension, so I stopped cutting. So it's always good just to reset when you need to. Perfect. So with her bang, um, I'm just doing it a little, like more of like what her center part naturally goes. And then I just divided it from about, I lay my comb down and where it starts to kind of shift, that's where the peak of her bang is to the corner, like kind of where the temple is. So I'm just going to bring that down 
And I'm just going to take a tiny bit off. Divide that in half. And I'm going to bring this center a little over. I'm just going to do really broad strokes, but it's going to go from shorter to longer. That's why I'm also pulling it over just ever so slightly. Because I want it super soft. Because I want it to kind of like curtain out. So I'm going to do the same on this side. And on this side, I use the heel. On this side, I'm going to use the tip. And here's my guide from the other side. I'm just going to hold it. And before I start cutting, I like start moving with the stroke that I want to use. Goes from shorter to longer. Let's see. This side's a little heavy, so I'm just gonna pull that out. It's like heavy right here. So I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of weight out. That's better. Check this side. This side's fine. Alright, so this is her finished look. As you can see, like the bang, we went from shorter to longer on both sides. It's nice and full at the bottom. Um, I did not want to do any face frame. I wanted this to kind of have like a lot of strength and we uh, made sure by uh, to do that by leaving the perimeter out and just lay layering all the interior of the front and just gives it a lot of movement. It almost has like a 70s inspiration to it. And I like how soft that is. Although it's disconnected because of the razoring and how it's soft, it's just like visually seamless.